Welcome to the Ask a Matchmaker podcast. I'm your host, Matchmaker Maria, and this week's guest joining me on this week's hotline is a personal friend of mine, but she is also an incredible writer, an incredible content creator, Chrissy Rutherford. Welcome to the Ask a Matchmaker podcast. I'm so happy to be back after four years. I know. You were like, I think like episode five or six, like way in the beginning. That's crazy. I didn't even realize it was like so early in the game. Yeah. Well, it's also because of you I feel like you're one of like the three people who are like stop stop doing these live webinars it's time to turn it into a podcast do you remember this yeah we had a call during lockdown and I was obviously confiding in you because I had just left my job and was feeling like what the hell am I doing next and like whenever we chat I feel like we just always like riff off each other and right. give each other like great ideas and I remember you saying like I'm thinking about starting a podcast and I was like you absolutely need to do that well here we are now look at you in a studio anyway no couldn't, couldn't be here without you. Um, so Chrissy, a lot of things have happened the last few days and I feel like yeah. we need to talk about it since this episode comes out in a couple of days. Yeah. Um, I feel like I ruffled a lot of feathers with some opinions mm -hmm. last week on Instagram about the brides, uh, the brides, the brides but also was. men paying. So let's, let's yeah. start from the beginning. Okay. I don't even know how it came up, but I said something like someone messaged me about right. how they have to pay for all these things this summer and they feel a lot of resentment for the their friend who is the bride. Yeah. And it was because they were commenting on the episode that was aired two weeks ago mm -hmm. when a bridesmaid had called in and was not invited to the bachelorette party. That was crazy. Okay. I saw that clip and I was like, that is the rudest thing I've ever heard. Also because they weren't like the bride didn't profusely apologize. Yeah. Like, Oh, we must've just like Oops. missed you. What? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh and then that's, mm -hmm. and that's when I learned, I thought, because I guess this is what's happening in my circle Yeah, that brides paid for everything. No, that's not been my experience. Right. I had no idea. And then, so I'm being schooled on Instagram about right. how like, no, I've been a bridesmaid. There's a minimum $2,000 between hair, makeup, dress, hosting a bridal shower, um, uh, you know, going to a destination bachelorette. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm getting this in waves and I'm pretty old to not know this. I'm, I'm 39. Like, I feel like at some point I should have included, especially since I make brides. Like, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no. And then immediately after that happened, so that happened on a Saturday and then like three You're or no, that happened on a Friday. Yeah. That happened on a Friday. <laughs> And then on Saturday, The Cut has that article about the women who are going broke being in wedding parties. Oh, I don't know that I saw that. I was too distracted by all their like anti-therapy stories, but uh, I believe it. <laughs> right. And so then suddenly all of my DMs turned into like best friend confessionals, like all of these <laughs> bridesmaids who are feeling a lot of resentment towards the bride. And I guess what I was learning in that experience was that it doesn't matter what the bride does. Like the bride could um, say, you know, thank you or could give you a gift after the fact. But the moment more than $200 was spent mm -hmm. on this event, and you might know like you, there might not, not be reciprocation, right? You, there's no guarantee that your bridesmaids are going to get married they're going to have kids that you're going to be able to attend those things when you've got daycare to think about, or, you know, yeah. a husband who's part There's of also no expenses. guarantee that the bride's going to get married because I have gone on a bachelorette for a wedding that never happened. And you put all that money down. Sorry to my friend. I love you. <laughs> yeah. But do you know, like, so all of these, like just a thousand DMS of like, just a lot of heartbreak. Yeah. And that's when I put a same, I put a little, like, here's my take. Like, I think you got to weigh it. You know, do you, instead of having seven bridesmaids, maybe you only have one or none or two, you know, and then you have to weigh it. Like I'll pay for all of this because I just want you to enjoy be with me on my day. Yeah. You know, exactly. I don't want to owe you for later. 
I mean, I messaged you about this. I'm like, I'm very anti like the industrial wedding complex. I just think everything that is happening around it is so scary at times. And I see so many friends who are also like wrapped up in this, like, I have to travel for all these bachelorette parties and, and all of this stuff and the gifts and the flying and the, uh, the hair, the makeup, the dress, the dress. I've left every bridesmaid dress in the hotel. Like, I don't even want that coming home with me. I got so many DMs <laughs> that said that too, that they take the bridesmaid dress and just straight to the garbage. And I was just like, whoa. I wear that thing again. Right. It's Never. A, it's a very specific kind of dress. Never. So that conversation happens. And then somehow I do another take, which is the thing that I'm noticing in my DMs is that women who might belong to certain subcultures. Yeah. You know, I'm Greek American, but yeah. there's, you know, Turkish American, yeah. Lebanese American. We, American. Need adopt, we need to adopt, we need to all adopt Greek culture. But yeah. <laughs> None of those men would allow a woman to like pay on a date. Like it's not even like a question. It's like offensive to be like, should we go have these on the date? So I put that take up, like, I'm sorry, these women, like I'm paying for my own things. And I'm also dating people who are paying on dates. So I think American women, you know, thinking about what it means to be an American bridesmaid. Yeah. You need to double down and be like, no, you right. men have to pay on dates. I like how you think about it holistically because you're like, is that what that is? Yeah. Because... I'm like, in a way, it's like the two are not at all related, no. but you are thinking about overall the cost of being a woman in America, like right. everything that goes into it and yeah. And having to like pay all this money to like go to friends, weddings or baby showers. Social and, upkeep. Yeah, yeah. Is all I, like, I had never even thought about that until you started bringing that up. Um, there's so, the social upkeep. Yeah. There is looking a certain presentable way i know and the men who think that that is a choice no are it's not out of their mind it's not because <laughs> if that guy was a boss at a company i bet you he wouldn't hire someone who wasn't putting on something of course not it's like we as women like i can say as much as i want that i choose to do my hair like this and i choose to do my makeup like this but the, the reality is, is that I've been brought up this way in the culture that I grew up with, you know, American society to be competitive yeah. in the dating market and then competitive in the professional market. Yeah, of course. A month ago, someone was on uh, like on the news because she got passed on from a job because she wore no makeup to the interview. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, also I'm not saying it's right, but um. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a that, if that's what society is imposing on us. Also, don't even get me started on black women and how they get passed up for job, even like interviewing for a job. Right. If they have if they're wearing their natural hair, literally right. the hair that grows out of our. Oh, hair. yeah. The intersectionality now of like if you have so, different things like, yeah, white women have. Uh, or, you know, this kind of hair have like these sort of expenses. But black women, especially when you get, you know like what's it called like different texture yeah um that costs money and to so straighten your hair to if you're getting chemical straighteners if you're wearing weaves wigs etc like i yeah i wore a weave for years and that's like i mean that was at least like six hundred dollars every time i'm doing that and like that's like the hair the install all of that plus the time it takes oh my god i mean i'm like i got back years of my life when i did yeah my like i used to get highlights and not even a lot like i would get the you know, the like low, you know, yeah, yeah. And that was $300 every six weeks. Yeah. Right. And I just, in my mind, I'm thinking like men don't have these expenses and they think no. that this is a choice, I think it's a choice, but it's, it's definitely cultural. It's definitely imposed. And also let's not, let's add one more layer to this. Okay. The, the two more layers, right? Yes. The first layer is that a lot of these women, women in the dating market, a lot of them are tasked with getting these social upkeep expenses mm -hmm. at a time when their salary is at its lowest. Yeah. Right. When you're 25, when you're 28, right. you're, you don't have a mortgage. Mm -hmm. You have, you're at the bottom of the the career ladder. Yeah. Um, you don't have that money. And I just don't see men participating in those kinds of activities where social upkeep costs a lot of money. And now add women who are 30, 35, 40, where you have fertility treatments. Yeah. Right. Like maybe you're getting your eggs frozen. I don't see grand. men. Right. That's a flat 10 gram right there. I don't see men having to <laughs> put money down for that either. Right. Right. And so, so anyway, so I, I lay that all out 
And then I, I, I have women in one video saying, well, I prefer to be 50, 50. This way he doesn't expect anything from me. Yeah, exactly. Oh. And so I make another Women who are committed to this 50, 50, like I need you to think about your self-worth. Yeah. Especially like on a first date, like first date, you want to go 50, 50 I with a never. man on a first date day. My time is valuable. That is insane to me. I don't even, I don't even pretend like I want to take out my wallet, my credit card, nothing. I just sit there. Oh yeah. That's the other thing. People like, <laughs> well, you know, like a guy will say like, oh, I appreciate if you do the fake out. And I'm like, for what? For what? I'm that's a game. That. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I have never done the fake out. And no. then one woman even said, no. well, he can pay for it, but I'll do the tip. And I'm like, what? what? <laughs> Like, what are you saying now? Like, I think the oh, tip is crazy. the best part that's because crazy. I want to know right. what that's you think of service here. workers. Like, I'm sorry. I don't date anyone who tips less than 20%. No. Like we're at 20. This could be the shittiest service yeah. ever. We're still putting 20%. And I love when like women complain that they're like, oh, well, you know, I like I pretended or like I offered and then he accepted. I'm like, okay, well, okay. you can't even get mad. I know. You Why did you even, offer? You offered, he accepted because he probably didn't want to offend you. Maybe you have a, mm. you know, some I'm ideology so for that. Um, really... But now you can't even get mad. And I'm not, I'm not even mad at him for accepting, right? Agreed. Of course, if he wanted a second date, he would have insisted. So I actually yeah. asked my husband about this. I yeah. said to him, like, <laughs> what do you believe? And he goes, I believe whoever asks should pay. And I go, okay, if I had asked you out on a date, would you have let me pay? And he's like, absolutely not. Exactly. And I goes, I'm like, so then what's, what are you saying? He goes like, oh, well, I think if you're being, if you're asking someone on a date, you should be prepared to pay. But I also think that if a guy wants a second date, that's his first date to pay. I agree. And like stick to a date that is within your means. Boom. That's it. That's it right there. Listen, a lot of girls, I think, want to shit on like a walking date, whatever. I a walking dates are the best. Love them. No, I love them. Dates are the best. Also, because I'm like, I'm not trying to have dinner with someone on a first date mm. when I really don't know them. And like, we've met off an app. Like, I need to be able to like easily escape if need be. Like, I, I just, I don't know. There's just also something so nice about like going for a walk in the park. Obviously, like it depends on where you live. And I spend I mostly date in London, so I can go to Regent's Park and have a beautiful walk. When lockdown was happening and we had to set up dates, yeah. walking dates were have been just consistently our highest success rate onto second dates. Right. Like people shit on them, but like, no. you know what? It's your first meetup. Check the vibe. Exactly. Go for a walk, That's grab a gelato. Effort. I'm like, so? trust me, you will know what kind of effort a man is trying to put in. Yeah. If you're showing up with flip-flops. Like, but also just as it progresses, like yeah. just because someone is taking you to like a thousand dollar dinner does not mean he's putting in the effort in a, in a way that matters. Right. Right. So the men that were commenting, a lot of them were scared of gold diggers. And I should note, I, I did look at their profiles. They don't look like the kind of people who have gold. <laughs> the men who are complaining about gold diggers never even have any money. Like, <laughs> so we're worried about the wrong things. But there was a woman, there was a couple of women who were like, I don't feel comfortable with him paying for everything. What do I do? So I put up another video, yeah. which I think people only saw like the first 15 seconds. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> like, and I'm like, can you please just watch the rest of the video? Like I said, right. I they got triggered. They got really triggered right in the comments. And I was like, listen, you're good you, at triggering people. I it's, am it, great at triggering. I know. People. And it's, it's for their own growth. It is. It really is. I stand by what the things that I'm saying here, Yeah, of course, especially on this topic. And you're not trying to be inflammatory. You're, you're just challenging people to think differently. Cause I, I'll tell you where that ends. Right. Yeah. So like I said, basically that, you know, on dates where you're at restaurants or at bars, I don't like the sound of two plastics hitting the POS mm. just he pays. Yeah. But for experiences or right. movies, yeah. Pay. It'll, it'll even out. If you want to be that kind of couple, it'll right. even out, but yeah. you, you know, you do the online ordering. He yeah. does the in-person ordering. Okay. Fair. Um, but the thing about 50 50, I was actually just reading, I think this was on Reddit, hmm. that where does the accumulation of like the 50, where does that end? Where does the 50 50 conclude at, right? Yeah. I was just reading about this couple. Uh, this woman had posted about how they've been a 50 50 couple. They got married. They're still 50 50. Okay. So I'm just envisioning like Venmo, you know, going back and forth. I've yeah. seen couples like this, by the way, on my Venmo. Yeah. So she gives birth. She's trying to do it naturally, but 
after 24 hours, she gets uh, her epidural okay. to help her in the, you know, to aid her in yeah. giving birth to her baby. The hospital bill comes in. It's $8,000. And he says, <laughs> I didn't give birth to this baby. You, I didn't ask for the epidural. You couldn't handle it. You should. Divorce. <laughs> Divorce. You should be responsible for all $8,000. And I was just like, and this is why that 50-50 shit. Like you have to be a team at some point. You have a baby. That is an immediate. <laughs> I would literally just forward that conversation right to my lawyer. Like. No, that is sick. What do we got here? I don't I don't like that at all. You know what's funny though is like I remember when I gave birth, like the bill. Oh yeah, one bill was to me and then one bill was to my child. <laughs> like the neo natal. Like stuff. a welcome to America. Here's some debt. <laughs> like here's some debt for you. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then so I have to show you then this other thing. I want to get your reaction. Right. Um I saw this post today and I thought oh, to myself, no. oh, this is perfect to add the next layer to it because this is what we're talking about at the end of the day. Like there are men who like, there is this fine line between like a guy taking you out mm -hmm. and then also a guy like 50, 50 at the same time. Okay. Uh, this will make sense when I show you this video. Yeah. So like how, how do you, how do you expect to have like a wife and kids but yet you don't want to like really provide yet you don't want her to work? Well, I just think that she should find her own way to make her money. Like, for example, the government steals everybody's taxes. Like, find a way to take your money back from the government. If you can't do that, then you deserve to live in the streets, honestly. So, you want a wife and kids, and you want to be the provider, and you want her to be home and be a homemaker. Exactly. But you're not gonna, you're not gonna give her spending money. Like, if she needs to go, go get groceries. I'm gonna just give her the basics. If she, if she can live off the basics, she's fine. Otherwise, you're but just asking is, for too much. The basics is, is pampers, food, and clothes. That's about it, really. Pamper, food, and clothes. Yes. Is she, are you gonna? Is she allowed to like? meet up with her friends and have like coffee absolutely not so she's at home focusing on our family and that's about it she, she has no reason to go anywhere else honestly and you think that's okay like you yeah that's that's the way it should be that's the way it is so basically you want her to be a slave just to be at home cook clean Some for you might think of it like that but like that. That, that that's that's modern day slavery basically some people think of it like that but you know what it is what it is it okay, is so what it is if you don't want to pay for those things it's that mean we're splitting the bill like we're going to split the bill today yes so after all that i would just walk out <laughs> that's abuse <laughs> like that's that's shout out to uh alexis uh a l e h x u s for that gem of a video um did it say like was that she was on like a first date yeah with worst first date ever was the caption i don't i, I i'm speechless i don't well, know like some of the yeah some of the men that you know women come across i'm in those like facebook groups about like are you dating this guy and uh -huh. this, oh the horror stories I, I don't know. I'm like, what is wrong? What is wrong with people? It really scares me. There's something wrong with men d deeply. <laughs> I think there are, there are, some men. there are some men. I think some men are, are kind of, I think some men are currently poisoning the dating pool. Yeah. And it's hurting a lot of people. I agree. It's kind of like, you know, how like the tiniest dog has like the biggest, biggest bark. Absolutely. Like that it's is, not a lot of men that are like, like the this. Napoleon complex. Like right. Like most men are great men. Yes. But you have this tiny pool of men yeah. that go on dates with everyone yeah. somehow. And they're just poisoning the well at every turn. It just gives everyone such a like distrust. Yeah. And I just feel like there's just get off. Like if you are, I mean, it just feels no. Uh, I don't know. That, I do like that, that I, it's wild. I do like that he uh 
promoted that she should commit tax fraud. I know. I was he's like, you should take your money back from the government. Okay, let me get right on that. Yeah. Let me get right on that. Um yeah, that I don't know. That that's frightening. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, how do you feel about taking some hotline questions? Let's do it. All, All right. right. Welcome to the Ask a Matchmaker Hotline. How can we help you? Hi, I'm Maria and Chrissy. I'm so happy to speak with you. I'm very excited to get your advice, hopefully. Um, so I am a 30-year-old woman. I'm also from Central Jersey. Maria, I just wanted to mention because you put it on your story and I want to meet you so bad. But um, I started seeing this man. I met him on Hinge two months ago. Um, he's 32 years old. He has a full-time job. He's really great. Um, we had a great first date. We started off having like really serious conversations right off the bat about our goals, our values, our futures, like um, everything under the sun. And all has been great. We talk almost every day on the phone um, from 20 minutes to like two hours at a time. Um, but he mentioned that he wants to take it slow um, we've talked about being exclusive. Neither of us are seeing anyone else. He deleted his hinge. I deactivated mine. Um, but we haven't labeled it boyfriend, girlfriend because of this taking it slow. And um, for him, it's because he had a really bad relationship um, that ended a few months ago. And this is my first serious relationship. And I've talked to him about like wanting to spend more time with him. I see him once a week right now. Um, but we do talk every day on the phone and I'm just okay. not sure how to approach it again because we did talk about that. And he said the slow thing um, and that he needs time. So like I'm feeling a bit stuck. Where does he live? He lives about like 45 minutes from me. Like South, North, West? South. Yeah. South. Mm. Is, this, is he like a 609 person? We don't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> uh I think he is actually. <laughs> I mean they call it a hoagie. It's a yeah. sub. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay. Keep um over wait, there. how long have you guys been dating? So we met two months ago. Um, oh no, yeah. no, it's over. It's, over. it's yeah. done. <laughs> It's done. I'm sorry. Um avoid it, men. We'll let you know. When they start saying stuff like flow. Let's take it slow. I mean, I think Once there's some. Week. I think it's fine to take it slow if there's um, intention and like it, it's momentum. Moving. Momentum, like yeah. you need momentum in a relationship to keep it going. And seeing each other once a week, yeah, that's not enough. Like you kind of have a pen pal that you meet up with once a week. Are you guys that's... having sex? We did of after the first like fourth date in person um but we had spoken many times before that like we met a few times in person we had all of those conversations i tried to do the 12 date rule it didn't work out entirely okay. but but do you have sex um, every time you see each other now no so we did it a few times and then since then it stopped and like the last four times that we met up we didn't have sex at all um even when like, someone else <laughs> yeah dude no this yeah. is this is a time thief yeah. i think is this a, you're in a situation ship get out while right now um set yourself free yeah it's summer's coming Over. girl there's yeah. there's more men out there for I'll, you. I'll take another hot girl summer and yeah and was I, the... I was in a previous situation ship and he knows about that and i explained like my insecurities and like where i'm coming from and what i want from him and he says like i understand i'm not that person i'm not a boy i'm a man like i'm no. gonna treat you like a woman no. but he didn't mm. make time for me <laughs> how does he treat you like a woman tell me about your last date how did he treat you like a woman uh the last date and he came over for a few hours and then he left um we watched so you, a movie. did you cook yeah i did okay so you got a free meal yeah did you guys have sex nope <laughs> that's weird no yeah, that's, he says he wants to take it slow and he that's wants to not, that's that's not that. slow. <laughs> yeah. Listen, you can be slow, right? Yeah. But you're still doing the momentum. Like yeah. the train can be going fast, right? Where you see it's going like, let me do it a different metaphor, okay? <laughs> you're on a train that's going from Central Jersey to Boston and there's like 11 stops in between, right? And the train is going fast, but there's still stops, yeah, which makes the ride 4 hours long instead of 
45 minutes. Do you get what I mean? Not really. <laughs> Every relationship needs momentum. You have to keep seeing each other and you can still take it slow. Yeah. Right. So uh like if there was a direct train from New Brunswick, New Jersey to Boston, and it was a English train, let's be for real, <laughs> uh, it would be a 45 minute, it would be a 45 minute ride, right? That's right. taking it too fast, yeah. right? Because it's just, there's no stops, Right. But if there's 11 stops in between, right? Because you have to stop in Newark, then you got to stop in New York, then you got to stop in New Haven. There's a stuck in the station. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even, yeah, that's, thank you. Think We can build on this metaphor. Yeah. It's stuck, Your train in, the is stuck in the station. You got to New York and you've just been stuck in the tourist trap ever since. Yep. And that's it. Yeah. And I'm feeling like that. Was stuck you know, the, the train station. could be going fast, but it's stopped. And it's like, I mean, do you feel like, well, obviously, you know something is up. That's why you're asking this question. So it's like, have you been having those sort of gut feelings of like, I don't feel like this is right? It's more like I feel like I'm not a priority in his life. And I've told him that. And he kind of throws it back at me as like, well, I make time after work to call you every day. So like we speak every day and I'm busy and I have this yeah, but and that. But like, I just think like men... That's are, they're like they're like girls in the sense that they love to just chat they'll chat you up every day text oh, you etc yeah without making real plans to see you more than once a week like, like 45 minutes isn't even a lot like if if i were a single man after work yeah and um i want to have sex too like right. i want to guarantee that happening uh i'm coming up to you like three nights a week and i'm probably sleeping over at least one of those nights yeah and then i'll go to work the next day even you you've been dating for two months no this is yeah. unacceptable no i think i think we gotta break up with him yeah. don't let him ruin your summer no you're better than this yeah you deserve more don't even spend memorial day with him no oh my god please don't <laughs> um yeah and i think that's a huge red flag if you're saying like you feel like you're not a priority i want to feel prioritized in a relationship right. and and also someone can't do that if someone is telling you i don't feel like a priority that is not the place for you to invalidate my feelings no nope. to tell me well i do like no no because no. that also says a lot more about how other arguments or conversations are going to go down the line right you're throwing it back instead of just like validating my feelings and then maybe asking what, what could i do, do <laughs> to make you feel like a priority Instead of, I do this and I do that and right. I do this. And I'm like, okay. Also, any dude who's saying, like, actually saying, like, I'm not like other guys or whatever. No. Immediate no. No. So many right. guys are like so many guys. Like, no. Yeah. Thank be, you for the question. Be about it. Don't yeah. talk about it. Yeah. Don't spend Memorial Day weekend with him, though. Just thank you. Yeah. I don't even know what his plans are. And he hasn't asked me what I'm doing. So Great. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Great. Oh, wow. We just solved. We just solved that one. Next case. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's take our next question. Welcome to the Ask a Mashmaker hotline. How can we help you? Hello there. Hey. Um, I have to say I am such a big fan of both of you. Chrissy oh. for Joy is my favorite newsletter. I look forward to getting it all the time. That, that's You're amazing. making me tear up. That's amazing. Well, thank you. Honestly, um, Maria, you are, I, I thank you for everything that you do for women of all kinds. Same. Um, my question. So I am taking a solo vacation, yes, taking girl. myself to Hawaii. Um, and I am sort of like, I want to, dare I say, have a little bit of a hoe phase. Um, and I'm unsure how to like talk to people or flirt with people when I'm by myself. I want to be safe, but I also want to have fun. And just looking for some advice on on how to maximize my vacation. I well, have some ideas. I know. Ideas? I So two ideas. But my first thing I was going to say is like, don't overthink it. But dating apps is, I mean, an easy way to you know, kind of start like fishing, right? Wait, when are you going on this vacation? I leave this afternoon. Oh, damn, girl, you better girl, download, download Tinder. Hinder. <laughs> hint, hint, Tinder. Um, Set that zip we're, code. Uh, we're in my bumble over here. And uh, <laughs> um, put your location there. And while you're on the flight, let those likes rack up. I would talk to the guy next to me. Be like, what are oh, you doing? Okay. 
All right. Here's what I would do. Cause when you're alone, um, I can certainly understand the stress of being alone on a trip. Um, and you do need, I think the social design of safety and the way to do that is to actually look for any opportunities for group travel mm. or group experiences or group excursions. Okay. Right. Which I feel like you can definitely find in Hawaii. Oh yeah. So you'll find yeah. like, um, you know, walk around and, you know, maybe there's like a snorkeling or maybe there's boating or maybe there's like Jeep riding and then ask the people that if you don't book it online, you can ask them in person, like, what kind of crowd do you attract? Or like, are there people that are my age? And, you know, okay. all of this, like you're on vacation, they're on vacation too. Don't yeah. think for a second that a single man uh, or a single woman, I don't, uh, isn't thinking the same thing that you are. Right. Right. Everyone wants, you know, just don't leave with a baby. That's all. <laughs> don't leave <laughs> impregnated. But no, like, I think that if you, cause it's easy to meet people when you're doing stuff. Yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah. And I would really, um, and I, are you, if you're staying at a hotel, you can also ask the concierge, for like, Hey, where can I meet new people? What's going on? Like they might have, oh, that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah, they probably have like activities as yeah. well. Like, Oh, we have, you know, happy hour from four to seven or right. whatever. And, or they'll tell you which bar has like, Oh, this bar or that restaurant has like live karaoke, or this one has like a luau. Like the concierge has like all of the answers here and essentially okay. like how to do that. Like you're there to flirt. So tits out. Yep. You know, okay. You be a bikini. Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, put a little, put a little highlighter on your cheeks, right here, so that you know. Also, I think. Listen, yes, traveling alone can. I think we can always feel like really self conscious, and I think for that time, you have to kind of adopt this like mindset of like, I'm just going to be my most outgoing self. I'm yeah. just going to go for it. Nobody knows me here. Like I love yeah. that feeling when I travel somewhere where I'm like, no one fucking knows me. So what's your persona when you're alone? Like, what are you, what are we romanticizing here? I don't even know if I like have a person. I mean, I just, I think I'm hot. So I think I'm <laughs> hot anywhere I go. So I just, I, I love that feeling though of like, no one knows me and I yeah. can just be whoever I want to be. I'm not saying like I'm being someone else, right. but there just isn't this idea of like, you know, people, yeah, people are going to expect that I'm going to do, do something a certain way or say something and blah, blah, blah. I just, I don't know. I hate like people's projections. So, um, I, I just always get really excited. Yeah, no, I get excited too. Although I've had to like reel it in a little bit, <laughs> uh, especially now when I'm traveling, like I, this is, gonna sound so insufferable <laughs> but like I get recognized now by yeah, yeah, random that happens. places yeah. like I was at the airport going to Orlando and yeah, some guy came up to me with his kids and was like you're matchmaker Maria and I'm like yes I am so now I can't be like you yeah know, I, I mean we're, sure. we're people on the <laughs> internet so yeah that, I was in my happened I was in my husband's village and <laughs> This woman, like, you know, straight up a village. I know, I know. Like, they just got like, this. and this woman's like, hey, I follow you. Can we take a photo? And I'm like, that's cute. What? <laughs> what? I can't even be normal here. Anyway, no, other than that, when I used to travel solo, especially when I was single, I pretended I was like a senator. A senator? <laughs> like, I have like really good posture and just kind of like business mode. Because mm. some guys kind of like that. So. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Fair. It worked for me. Yeah. But I have one more one more quick question for you, yes. Chrissy. It's yes. it's a full it's a full moon. Oh, I know. Jupiter, Jupiter's moving into uh Jupiter's moving. What what manifestation Jupiter's moving what? into Gemini, but also yes. Venus and Jupiter are conjunct today. So actually, this is a great omen to kick off your trip. Yay. That's what I was hoping you'd say. Yes. Did she... You know what your rising sign is? I'm a Scorpio rising. So it, what's a rising? Taurus, what seven? So eighth. Yeah. So Jupiter is going into your eighth house. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, the house of all, sex. You guys, death, are, you guys are rebirth. literally speaking Chinese right now. I can't. <laughs> I don't understand. Listen, what is a rising sign? It's your. It's your ascendant. It's the sign that was coming up on the eastern horizon at the moment you were born. Mm, and okay. that's your personality, basically. Also, wait, you're a Scorpio rising. That is like so sexy girl just own it oh, 
Thank you. Wow. I am going to accept that with grace. Thank you Scorpio so much. Scorpio Risings are the sexiest people ever. Are you a Scorpio well, Rising? Well, that is, that no, is what I did maybe I am. Going, going into this trip. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Have a safe trip, okay? Thank you so much. Enjoy. You both have a good weekend. You too. Bye. Hello. Welcome to the Ask a Matchmaker hotline. Hi. How are you? Good. We're good. So... My, I don't even know if it's a question or just like confirming my thoughts, really. Mm. Um, I'm 38. Me I'm too. Single. <laughs> um, my mom recently passed away. Oh, sorry. And thank you. And so for the last like seven, eight weeks, we've been with her in the hospital and stuff. Um, and in that time, I was introduced through a mutual acquaintance. Um, to this guy who is 40, um, divorced, and has 50-50 custody of his child. Okay. And so we started texting. I couldn't really get like a good read on him through texting, but we he asked me out and we got drinks. Um, he's definitely a little bit of an overshare. I certainly got a lot about uh -oh. the divorce and kind of like the custody stuff um and then after drinks he was like you know text me when you get home make sure you got home safe and I did and he was like oh did you have fun tonight did you know everything I told you make you nervous or say oh boy I mean it, it didn't it's it's whatever um so we were texting a lot the next coming like two weeks, like he would send me a lot of pictures, like his morning coffee. He has a dog. I got like pictures of the dog and like the kid and stuff. Oh, um, this is going. <laughs> Wait, did you well, go on any more physical dates? Yeah. So okay. the following weekend he had his kid, um, but he asked me out for the weekend after, okay. um, which we got dinner and I think we had a good time. Um, he walked me to my car. We kissed. And he, again, was like, text me when you get home to so make sure you got home safe. Um, but since that date, which was like a little over a week ago, the texting has been very silent, very quiet. Um, and so I'm just not sure. I guess I'm just like not sure where to go from here. So he has said like he can like when he gets really busy, he can kind of fall off. And, you know, he's there's nothing not to do. Let me, um, there's nothing, let me do. tell you why this happened. But before okay. I do that, let me ask you a question. Do yes. you like them? I think so. I'm okay. interested in continuing to get to know him, whether it goes somewhere serious or not. I would like to continue to get to know him. Okay. And then, all right. So let me tell you what happened. You waited, not you. When I say you, it's the plural. Usted. <laughs> okay. Usted. <laughs> You all waited two weeks between dates. We see this at work too. Like I will set up a client on a first date, like on a Tuesday. And then he, I'm like, oh, you guys had a good time. You want to go on a second date? Yeah. Okay. How about this Wednesday? Or like, excuse me, I get the feedback on Wednesday. I'm like, how about tomorrow? Like she's available or Friday. And they're like, oh, I'm leaving town for the next 10 days. Man, like you just wasted a match. Because no matter what you do, if you're not FaceTiming in between mm. to create some sort of like visual Connection. momentum, yeah. it's just not gonna happen, mm. right? Like, it, and I think okay. that's what's happened here. You guys spent two weeks texting, which texting is not dating, uh, and you have two weeks between dates. So all he did was just reconfirm that he had a good time on the first date with you by going on a second date. There was a kiss and now he's dropped off. Is that what's happened? Is that accurate? Yeah, I should say he did ask me out on Cinco de Mayo, but I just wasn't able to go. Um, and so maybe that, I don't know. Okay, but if you weren't able to go, couldn't you just, did you say to him, I can do May 6th though? I said, um, I'm not able to do tonight. I am around all week and also still up for the weekend that we talked about going out. And he said, absolutely. And so we didn't make a plan during the week. I want you, if it's with this guy or the next guy, I want you to be way more specific, right? I don't need to know that you're available all week. Yeah. Got, if you can't do, okay. oh, I, can you do Mon Sunday? No, I can't do Sunday, but I can do Monday and Tuesday. So that way they think these are the only two days I have. Right. That's you, it. You can't give them too many right. options. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's, you know, um, so now what's the next step? The next step is 
if you want to see him again, if you like him, right. you, you know, you kissed. I mean, I don't think you have nothing to lose. Right. You can ask him. Right. Out. Yeah. Just ask him out. Be like, hey, I was just thinking about you. Um, do you want to meet tomorrow night? That's it. Okay. Last ditch effort. Yeah. Nothing to lose. And who knows? Maybe it does work out. Yeah. I get it. But at the same time, it's like, you know, how old are his kids? His kid is six. He has one kid that's six and he has 50, yeah. 50 custody. You know, these are, I mean, my whole schedule right now is yeah. just my kid's shit. Yeah. Like a oh, graduation and performance and recitals. Right. And yesterday there was like a author workshop, which I loved, but like, you know, it was, there's a lot of stuff there with kids, even if it's 50, 50 custody. Totally. Um, you know, last ditch effort, do it like that. And yeah. We'll go there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks for calling in. Right. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Ahead. Awesome. Well, you know, that's a good time to end this episode too. But before we do that, um, Chrissy, yeah. you have the most incredible newsletter <laughs> called Forward Joy. I look forward to reading it every week. Thanks. Um, I love that. I feel like what I like about it is that it really comes from a place of vulnerability and sharing. It's almost like reading someone's diary entry, <laughs> but with like footnotes. Yeah, I get that feedback often. I know. I, I Listen, I don't know. I just, I really love sharing experiences that I've had that I've worked through and maybe felt a lot of shame, embarrassment, anxiety around. And I think there's the sense of, through this newsletter, I've been able to set myself free and also have made it possible for other people to set themselves free because, you know, even writing about not having been in a serious relationship and I'm in my late thirties now, like so many girls wrote to me being like, oh my God, like I'm in the same mm -hmm. situation too. And that's the thing. And I see this on your stories all the time. I'm like, I think it's so common right now, but because everyone feels so embarrassed by it, no one talks about it. Right. Same thing with like being a virgin in your thirties. It's like, I think a lot of people are a in that place right now, a like lot. That. And as we know, it's like connection feels in some sense, like, or connecting with other people feels really challenging right mm -hmm. now. And so, yeah, I think that's only like exacerbating everything. I get a lot of women in their late twenties who ask me about timelines. Yeah. And, and it's not even them being in a relationship. They're like, what's the timeline? Like, when do I need to be in it with a boyfriend by right. to get engaged, to get married? And I'm like, you have no control over, over any of this. Yeah. All you have is luck and you chasing opportunities. That's it. Yeah. That, that's know. all we get. I know. I, and you know, obviously there's so much like, dating advice and this and that out there. And I think everyone is trying to make dating feel very black and white in hopes that like people will feel some sense of control in the situation. But it's like, right. we have no control over another person. No, we don't. We can only control how we feel. Yeah. And how we respond things, to things. Yeah, how we respond to things. So yeah. Uh, no, Chrissy, you were excellent. What an excellent hotline this was. I think it was a lot of fun. And I'm so happy you're here. And we're not going to wait four fucking years to have you back on again. I know. To be fair, I feel like we have been trying to do this for like the last year or so. But yeah, because I'm sure. in New York half the time, it also makes things. No, it's fine, though, because uh, I love you very much. I love you. And uh, I feel so honored to call you my friend. I know. Same. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, people can find Chrissy on Instagram at Chrissy Ford, yeah. and you're going to subscribe to her newsletter for yes. joy. It is Better. so good. Anything else you want to add? I think that's it. Well, there you go. And, uh, you know, of course, if you're watching this, subscribe, like, watch other episodes, comment. Listen if to my first episode. <laughs> yeah. Go back and listen to Chrissy's first episode of the growth, uh, for both of us. Yeah. Um, and if you're listening to this episode, you know, and you enjoyed it, give it five stars, put down a little comment, Yes. you know, tell if the, the woman flying to Hawaii, she's got to write in and tell us what happened. We all, oh, I know. I put it in the comments. I meant to, I meant to tell her, I was like, she's got to let us know. How I want to see it as a podcast review. Yeah. I literally want her to go to Apple <laughs> podcast and tell us what happened in Hawaii. That would be great. I also want the first caller to give us a five star review and yeah. also write in the, re in the review comments, that what would, happened. I would love to, we told to, her to break up with her she the five star review and then the, the review comments like broke up with him <laughs>
Um, so, and, and yeah, so that's it for this week. Uh, you know how we end each week. Be lovable, but more importantly, be likable. Oh. See you next week.